Hey folks, it is a brisk 38 degrees here on the river and uh, I got uh, about four hours this morning to uh, to really, like the point of this trip is to see how well these things rig up. Uh, the TRD Gobies, I got them in yoga pants. I think that they're gonna do a good job this winter imitating our, our stone cats up here on the Susquehanna. And I've poured some uh, some heads. It's actually a football head that I made with an FG9 bristle guard and a collar. Don't really need the collar, but I'm gonna rig this, uh, you know, goby or, you know, small catfish profile bait. Stone cat, mad tom. I think it's all the same, same, uh, <clears throat> weight forward or, or just fat in the front half of, of this fish's design um, shape. It's a bait fish profile that uh, is pretty unique. And yes, it'll work on Lake Erie imitating the gobies. I just think, I look at it and I think, that's a small catfish. And uh, these river smallmouth love to eat the stone cats here on the Susquehanna, Juniata, all sorts of, you know, all sorts of uh, <clears throat> river smallmouth fisheries everywhere eat these little catfish. Let's give it a shot. Let's see how it goes. So I'm making my way up to uh, to some white water. Um, I want to try to find those um, those foam eddies in between the really fast current. You know, th this water is. Uh, probably mid 60s I'm guessing and uh, they're, they're gonna move to that current gradient you know between really fast and, and totally still water right next to it. So put a little bit of scent on there and um, I just kind of worked it into that bristle guard which have actually split uh, that's showing up. I kind of fanned it out there, so if it rolls on its side, you're not going to be snagging stuff. I like the overall size of it, uh, because especially in, in winter, they eat small. Throwing smaller baits is just a, a better, it gives you a better hookup percentage, you know, because they, they tend to grab the tail of longer baits and tug on them. Um, this, they gotta grab pretty much the whole thing. But we're not quite there yet in terms of needing it to be super small um, profile, but this is what, two and an eighth or two and a quarter inch long. It's a good size. Downsizing in winter is just smart. one on it. Nice looking fish. Not a giant, but I don't have to play him real hard. It's a fine wire hook. It's an owner 5318. You know, it's it's in him. I pretty much know that. Um, just threw it in there. Look, we're getting some of this grass. Threw it into that foam eddy and uh, see what we need. I didn't have real good bottom contact because I'm staying back from it and casting a long way in. Um, so it's not like I could feel that super solid connection to the bottom. Uh, it didn't matter though because with a fine wire hook, they move with it and you got them. You don't have to time the hook set perfectly like you do with a thicker wire hook. Be throwing it on this uh, custom rod I made myself with the uh, Rain Shadow Eternity RX10. Super sensitive. Uh, but this one's a medium light. I don't need a whole lot of power. Uh, but also going with the medium light fast, uh, I don't know, just 
it, it lets me push a uh, smaller bait further. All right, as big of an area as I have here, I think I want to use something other than the gobies as a search bait. Uh, I also think that, it, you know, this is a great tool once you do find them. Uh, I'm going to keep it, keep it up front, ready to go, but this time of year, I think we can move a little bit faster. I'm going to throw that jerk bait and uh, the leaves, the leaves are still on the trees and it's really not that bad. Um, but I think it just makes sense. Hey, let's Let's cover more ground a little bit quicker. I think, you know, it isn't that cold. And they should be really amped up to chase. So I'm going to throw the jerk bait a while. <clears throat> that feels like a good one. This one's right at 19 inches and uh, almost four pounds. It's like 314, 315. Couldn't get it to that, that four pound line, but so many fish in this year class uh, on, the, on the Susquehanna. And uh, man, when they all turn 20, what is it, next year, year after? I don't know, it's, it's gonna be crazy. But um, when you find a good fish like this, you know, you're, you're around others. So I'm going to release this guy, get back out there. Um, I'm probably going to keep going with the jerk bait. I know early in the day, um, it just makes sense to fish quicker. Uh, I will come back to the gobies. But I got faith in it. Um, I just need to make a heavier jig hit. So let's go ahead and let this beautiful fish, beautiful fish go back in there. See you later, big girl. Bye-bye. Catch you when you're bigger. So hey, sometimes with the jerk bait, it pays to just stick it out there, grab something to eat. Just walk around. Not really, I don't know, just stop working it for a minute. But get it out there, rip it down to a depth under the foam. Just stop jerking it. Eat. Do less. minds on if the gobies should have glitter or not. I think as a goby, yeah. Ooh, let me go forward. Um, if we're really imitating gobies, which we're not here in the Susquehanna, uh, it should should have glitter. But that smallmouth wasn't looking at that and seeing goby because they just don't have them here. He's thinking catfish, you know. And I look at, I think about the colors that are available. And for sure, um, 
the deal was going to be a good one. Gobi Bryant, actually, the back of it looks like um, like a Mad Tom. And peanut butter and jelly, I think, is going to be a really good one. But the black, I mean, the black is, black always works. And uh, that's, that's why I started with yoga pants. should have glitter or not is sort of an interesting debate. That's a good fish. Let's get out of here. Nice one. So I have while snorkeling on this river caught my fair share of mad toms, you know, in they're not a fish that has has bait fish scales they just have a skin man i got you good didn't i it's a good good little sticky hook holds them um so it would make sense that you know a color like goby bryant would uh would not be good because it's I mean it's got the brown on the back which is good because that's either tan or brown or you know some variation but it has glitter on the belly um, color like um, the deal yeah he is are you 18 no no yeah you're touching 18 got an 18 inch on that nice um, We'll go ahead and get her back in. See you. <clears throat> glitter or not. I know on a craw, I don't like glitter. I just don't. And it's really hard to find craw profiles. It, it, usually it's just straight up green pumpkin is your only option. Because the black has glitter. You know, everything has glitter. And a craw has no, no bait fish scales on it. But gobies do but we're imitating catfish. They do not have bait fish scales. Um, whatever, 18 that I just got, like the black. So I get more black. I think I'm gonna order some in the deal. I'm gonna order some in Gobi Bryant, even though it has bait fish scales and it doesn't, shouldn't have it. PB and J, I think that might be the winner, so. I'll order a bunch of different colors, play around with it. I'm looking at this thing in the, the water here. Man, that tail is just going do -do 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 in the current, just hanging there. Man, it looks good. <laughs> I like it. Anyhow, uh, heavier head, different colors. That's it so far. I'm playing around with different retrieves. So far, both of the fish I've caught have been letting it sit, but I like to just slowly reel along where it's just bumping along and, uh, you know, that's what happens when, it, when a Mad Tom gets dislodged. He's hunting for that next rock to, to sit under and uh, he will not stop moving his tail until he found it. So, and I guess when it stops, that's where he thinks he's found her, or at least he's he's close to, you know, where he thinks he wants to be, and that's when the uh, small month says, nah, you're not quite hidden. I still see you. And they suction feed him out there. They get the vacuum cleaner of their mouth and go <laughs> and suck him out of the rocks. I will say that I've thrown this thing, this, I'm gonna call it a 316th, right into this little log jam in the corner here repeatedly 
and I have not snagged yet. Now I'm asking for it, just, just mentioning it. But I think that weight with the FG9 bristle guard is uh, is doing doing good things for sure. So here's my take on on this so far. Uh, in in it's also the take on finesse fishing with small stuff in general. If they find this, they will eat it. But it is such a subtle, like it's it's a whisper, you know, whereas the jackhammer's a sonic boom, uh, which I need to get out there and throw the jackhammer some. I'm gonna do that next. Uh, but there are two things that, uh, that really concentrate fish in places that you can pinpoint, say, uh, they're right there. I'm going to put this right there. It's usually under the foam um, and it's it's colder temperature and higher water. Those two things uh, take them, and, and this is not that cold yet and, and the river's not real high. So they're spread out. So taking this whisper, this you know needle in a haystack and putting it out there uh, uh, you know, it's it's just playing the odds, and the odds aren't real good that they find something this small until it gets colder and the water gets higher. The water will get higher as soon as all of these leaves on the trees come down. Reason for that, when you do have rain, uh, the terrestrial vegetation, the bushes, the trees, the grass, they just slurp it all up. They just are, when they still have their foliage, um, they're taking in that moisture and less of it reaches the river as soon as all that you know all those leaves fall more of it makes it to the river the you know the river will be higher there'll be fewer of those concentrated foam eddies and this will excel so today was really about get some reps with it um, feel you know feel the bottom with it see how it acts in in current see how it snags or doesn't and it and i used the same one the whole time it's, it did not snag oh it's time for the sonic boom um so i'm happy with it but i gotta make a, a better well that head's good that head is is good as is but i'm gonna make one heavier option because i feel like um, there's going to be some situations where I find um, the need to hold in either casting across or, or near stronger current where it's still cold, you know, this winter and it's, it's absolutely, you know, I need to cast there, but in between here and there, which I don't want to enter the eddy, there is screaming fast current out here and then totally still foam there. So I am going to need a heavier head so I'll go back to the do it mold and uh, pour some more at least a quarter ounce maybe a little bit more than a quarter we'll see it's good to have that option all right let's go do some power fishing to get him with the smack of jackhammer. Oh yeah. There's two of them. There's one on the jerk bait and one following. Typical fall behavior. You get one, there's more with them. All right, that was a fun morning. I uh, got to test out a new bait. Got two real nice fish uh, in about three and a half hours. Um, gonna have a fun afternoon as well. I'm actually going down to uh, to Shanks Mare, which is a, a kayak shop uh, on the Susquehanna River, South Harrisburg. It's also the office of the Lower Susquehanna River Keeper. And I have a kayak and a Torquedo Ultralight 1103 that uh, I get to give to, to Ted, who's our, our lower Susquehanna river keeper. Uh, that'll be a different video, but he'll be able to use that for river cleanups and also for 
water quality monitoring. So if you don't know what a, uh, a river keeper is, um, you ought to do some research. These folks, uh, it's, it is their full-time job to, uh, to protect the river. And if someone's hurting it, hurting our fisheries, hurting the water quality, uh, it's their job to hold, hold people accountable. So uh, real happy to, to take care of someone who takes care of our river. Thanks for watching. See ya.